Ganking is both the most rewarding and frustrating part about being a jungler. There's games where you feel on top of the world where every play you go for feels like it's working out and you're putting both yourself and your team ahead. Unfortunately, we all know the feeling of those other types of games where absolutely nothing you try is working out. Every time you even try to get close to a lane, it feels like it's either warded or your opponent just easily walks away from you. That's precisely the feeling we're here to address today. In this guide, we're going to share with you four simple but very effective tips that will make it so that your ganks are successful more often so you can score kills more often and carry more games. Let's get into it. First up is one of the most fundamental basics, but by far the most important thing to consider when looking to set up a gank. Ganking isn't something you can just do as a jungler without any cost to yourself. Every time you try to execute a gank, there's a ton of risk that goes into it. There's the obvious ones like being counter ganked or even straight up 1v2'd by the enemy laner if you mess up, but there's other smaller but still meaningful risks that you're taking as well. 1. You're announcing to the entire enemy team where you are. Your biggest strength as a jungler is that you could be anywhere at any point in time. If you give exact information as to where you are, it could tip off specifically the enemy jungler on how they can punish you. For example, if you fail a gank in bot lane, they could take your entire topside jungle and rift herald. Not only the enemy jungler, but in the higher elo brackets, laners actually begin timing their aggression based on where the jungler was last seen. Although this wouldn't be your fault, you announcing yourself in a certain area of the map could lead to one of your laners dying 1v1, simply because the enemy laner knew they could now go aggressive safely. Which brings us back to the most important thing you should consider before every gank. You need to evaluate which of your lanes is worth ganking the most, and which ones are likely to result in a waste of time. Generally, this comes down to two factors. First, the follow-up of your own teammate. You ideally want to gank for your laners with the most CC, or at the very least damage output early on. Looking back at this clip from early on in the video, we can clearly see that Master Yi has picked a very poor lane to help, as Vladimir has neither CC nor any good early game damage. Not only that, but the second thing you want to consider is the enemy laner's ability to evade your gank attempts. Yasuo may not have Fizz levels of mobility, but when he has access to a minion wave, he's very elusive, on top of having a wind wall should he ever need to block incoming damage. This was clearly never going to work, and as we said, a very dangerous play by the Master Yi, since you don't have the luxury of wasting time or giving away where you are as a jungler. We're not saying you shouldn't ever gank a lane with low follow-up or an invasive opponent, but they should either be very overextended or low on health to make the risk worth it for you. So obviously what we're getting at is that the opposite of what we just said is what you should be looking for in a gank. You should prioritize pathing towards your laners, which have good CC and or damage, especially when they're versus opponents who lack mobility to avoid ganks. Ganking for a Leona and Lucian bot lane as a jungler is about as good as it's going to get in terms of follow-up. The second tip to making sure your ganks work out is an extension of the first. You really need to consider the natural sequence of how you and your teammates should press your abilities. So a correct example of this would be the following. As Elise looks to dive top lane with her Renekton, notice how she just gets close to her target but doesn't do anything just yet. Instead, she waits for her Renekton to walk up and stunlock the Kale with his guaranteed to hit W. Only then does she throw her Cocoon. That is a basic sequence that most players should know by heart. You always try to let the player with targeted CC go first before trying to land your skill shots. There is absolutely no way to mess up a gank this way. But here is an interesting question. See if you can get this right. Let's say Lee Sin is ganking for an Ezreal and Nami. Ezreal doesn't have any CC, so let's ignore him for now. Both Lee Sin and Nami have powerful skill shots that can make or break whether a gank results in a kill or not. If they're both in an equal position to land their spell, who should throw their ability first? Nami is the correct answer. Simply put, Lee Sin throwing his Q does very little to help Nami land her own bubble afterwards, but in the opposite order, if Nami happens to land her bubble, it guarantees that Lee Sin lands his Q. This is without a doubt an incredibly important skill to learn. There's so many champion combinations in the game that knowing what the correct sequence of abilities should be on the fly will take practice. That being said, the better you get at this skill, then the more consistent your coordination with your teammates will be. So let's test you on this one final time. Talia is looking to gank for her Nautilus and Draven bot lane. As she gets there, we'll inform you that Nautilus still has his hook available. With this knowledge, what do you think the natural sequence of Talia and Nautilus's abilities should be to give them the highest chance of securing a kill? Nautilus should definitely go first. If he hooks and then autos, then one of their enemies will be rooted for Talia to land a perfect combo. But Talia had other things in mind. She combos right as Nautilus throws his hook, causing her to completely miss. 
Everything turns into an absolute disaster, as that mistake gives the enemy Kaiza and Vigar the ability to outplay them into a clean triple kill for the enemy bot duo. This is a major reason why understanding the correct order before a gank is so important. Your teammate should also be thinking this way, which means if you go out of order, it's likely to throw them off guard, which could result in everything going horribly. As for our third tip, there will be times when your opponent has messed up so horribly that they are guaranteed to be dead as long as you don't mess up. In those cases, their only hope is for you to mess up your skill shot, which they'll try to dodge and then walk away. Let's show you an example. As Gragas comes into bot lane for a gank, the enemy Tristana is fairly overextended. Thus, Gragas immediately initiates with his E and throws his ultimate to knock her back, which Tristana easily dodges. At this point, she's free from her biggest threat, and so she uses both her W and Flash to make an easy getaway from a horrible situation. This is precisely the error we see so often from less experienced players. At this moment, you have to realize that from Tristana's perspective, she has to dodge absolutely everything. There's four Jin bullets to worry about, along with Gragas' Q and ultimate which means that she will 100% begin juking back and forth in an attempt to evade some of those skill shots. As Gragas, all you have to do is literally click towards her. You will close the distance without having to do anything since she must juke back and forth. But by immediately using your skill shot, you are giving your opponent free clearance to not have to worry about you anymore. They're now free to walk away or commit the rest of their movement abilities to build distance. Here's a perfect example of what you should do. The enemy Tom Kench is absurdly overextended in this clip. He's without a doubt dead as long as Jarvan doesn't mess up. So look what he does. He presses none of his buttons and just auto attacks the Tom Kench. Kench's only hope right now is to flash Jarvan's EQ and then use his W to build a ton of distance. But as long as Jarvan holds his spells, Kench literally can't do that. If your opponent's only way out is if you press and mess up your abilities, then just don't press them. It's that easy. Kench is eventually run down and it's an easy kill for the red team. There is one final tip we're going to share, which is a major reason why it will feel like a lot of your opponents just walk away from your ganks. As a jungler, you need to keep in mind that you actually have one of the greatest liberties of all in the game. Thanks to the starter jungle item, you have infinite sustain in both health and mana as you clear your jungle the entire time. Some champions maintain their health and mana a bit easier, but most junglers will generally always be full on resources, especially after their initial clear. On the contrary, most laners generally have to worry about building either health or mana sustain to deal with their opponents in lane. Which means that as a jungler, you are actually capable of rushing tier 2 boots before almost anyone else in the game. Think about it, so many junglers are viable almost exclusively because they can rush tier 2 boots and take over the map with their base damage or CC. Being able to rush movement speed while most of their opponents are stuck with no boots at all makes them incredibly deadly at running laners down during ganks. The opposite of that is also true though. A lot of junglers only way of reaching their target is through sheer movement speed. If you don't have boots yet, then forcing ganks is going to be significantly harder. Take a look at this Graves, he's one of those champions that has to slowly walk at his opponent to get in range to deal damage. But he still hasn't built boots yet this game. Nevertheless, after blue buff, he looks to gank the incredibly overextended Fiora, and she just waddles away from them. This is a major issue that a lot of players deal with, as we said at the start, you can't afford to waste time as a jungler. Looking back at this moment, let's imagine Graves had Berserker Greaves instead of these items. In that case, his gank would be a lot more successful. As he got into lane, he could very easily catch up to Fiora and chase her down, at the very least forcing a flash out of her. Something we want to make sure you understand is that rushing tier 2 boots is generally better when you think you'll have a lot of good gank opportunities. For example, if you had these laners with amazing gank setups against very immobile enemy laners, then tier 2 boots rush would be very powerful even if it was on a champion that doesn't like to do so that often, such as Graves. But these were his teammates this game. Not a lot of great follow-up, and Fiora and Vladimir are definitely quite elusive to gank. Therefore, we don't even disagree with his build choice. Graves actually itemized appropriately for this specific game. His only mistake is that he needs to remember what he's actually built to do. If you don't have boots, and your champion doesn't have great gap-closing tools, then don't force ganks at the expense of farming your jungle just because you feel like you need to. Is Gromp and Wolves responding very soon? Just continue farming and do what you actually built to do. Here's a good contrast. This Udir is having a great game and feels like he can continue getting ganks off with his lead. So during his first base, he makes sure to rush tier 2 boots at the expense of rushing his first core item. But he knows that as long as he can reach his opponents this game, he will absolutely shred them. Remember that the whole point is that he has fully upgraded boots before anyone else even has regular boots in the game. Everyone is so slow compared to him that he can actually brute force ganks due to his movement speed advantage. Now, what you find here on YouTube is just the tip of the iceberg. If you want to unlock your true potential, then you need to dive into skillcap.com. We have the largest catalog of League of Legends guides in the entire world, with over 1500 guides and 350 unique courses. You get brand new guides every week exclusive to our website. 
along with our Smurf commentaries where our challenger experts walk you through how to carry out of the exact rank you're stuck in. Still unsure? Well, you can have all your questions answered by those same challenger experts. Need one-on-one -on -one coaching? We got you covered with hand-picked coaches trained to the highest standard. Don't have time for that? Use Direct Pro, pick a past game you played, and within 24 hours get a personalized video from a top 100 challenger player breaking down exactly what you can do better. The best part, all of this comes with a rank improvement guarantee. If you don't climb at least 5 divisions while actively using Skillcap, you can claim a refund, no questions asked. So what are you waiting for? Head to Skillcap.com and get the rank you've always wanted, link in the description below. Alright guys, that is going to wrap it up for this guide. Follow these 4 tips and you're guaranteed to get more ganks off successfully and hard carry more games. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.